Oh, we're almost there. Oh, I can I can see you. Hi, Ross. I'm here. <laughs> All Ross. right. Happy Thank 420, brother. Happy 420, brother. You know what? Uh, a bit, bit, bit of a cool moment for me. Let's let 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 let's smoke a little together, shall we? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm actually gonna roll one up right here. Yeah, you roll one up. You, you know what? Maybe I'll I'll roll one up while we're talking. Then we can both puff one and we can chat. Okay, that sounds good, man. How's the how's the day been going for you? Uh, it has been pretty 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 good, man. I'm not gonna lie. Like um, we've had uh, this is our twelfth hour. I'm live streaming from my living room right now. Uh, it, it, it's been a long day, but we've had really influential guests, uh, really, uh, you know, informative people from the industry, and just good old-fashioned, great, yeah. casual conversation on 420 with the people that are really not only, like, making the decisions, but, but holding the feet to the fire of the people who make those decisions, right? So, it's really good. Right on. Right. I was on, uh, I heard you and your mom on this morning. <laughs> Kim? Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure. I think that's who it was. Yeah. Yeah, Kim's awesome. This morning, yeah, yeah, that was, yeah. Kim's, she's uh, she's one of my favorite advocates from from Ontario. She's she's solid. She's also like, I find that my favorite type of cannabis advocate is the person that will just just tell you how it is, but they're not going to sugarcoat it. That's it. That's what I like. That's it. Yeah, so it reminds me of a buddy of mine. You, you could talk about anything. You could start talking about ketchup. The next thing you know, it's, you know, half an hour has gone by and he will stop talking about ketchup, man. It's like, <laughs> those are the kind of people you can enjoy a good joint with. Fuck yeah, man. Hey, hey, I've had, I've had some fucking interesting talks about ketchup, man. I mean, let's not, let's not get sidetracked here, but. My my ketchup secret is you hit the fifty seven marker on the bottle. That's where you're supposed to tap. <laughs> ah. Ah. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm just gonna do a little quick little intro for for you here, Ross, to our people who are watching. Uh, I mean, the majority of you, I'm sure, who are watching, uh, are familiar with Ross. Probably not only from his Olympic days, but his canvas advocacy days that he had currently is kicking ass in. Um, Ross is, I mean, I'm going to speak personally, kind of my hero, watch him as a kid, you're a badass brother, uh, I don't want to date you, because, I, I mean, I'm pretty young too, so we're both pretty young still, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right on. uh but, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm glad that you, uh, not only were a great representation of Canada's, you know, Olympic prowess, but now you're a reasonable fucking voice, and a fun voice, for fucking cannabis, brother. So thank you for joining me. You bet. You bet. It's been uh, a crazy road, and I'm glad that it's led me here. That's awesome, man. I mean, it's it is really um, sorry. I'm like make sure this joint's going. It's inspiring to know that. I mean, you. I, I don't want to get like too semantics on like the background story, but like. Uh, you're you're a prime example of what you know pot can can cannot make it pot always doesn't make you like this weird lazy you know mm. you know you're a fucking active fucking you know sports you know you know accelerator like you, you you you've you've reached the pinnacle of that level uh, and you're still out here later fucking smoking pot so it's great yeah right and you know, there's uh, everybody's different, and you know, some people do lay around a lot, whether they smoke weed <laughs> or not, even if they don't smoke weed. And uh, that's just the way it is. So I choose to to be active. I, you know, I I don't like sitting still for for too long. I think smoking a joint's a good way to take a break, you know, and take a load off for ten minutes. I I timed it. One day. It pretty much takes me about. 45 minutes to roll the joint and smoke the joint. Wow. You must roll some good joints, man. <laughs> I might have screwed up the timing. <laughs> awesome, brother. Awesome. Uh, so, 
<coughs> we're, we're, we're both going to have this casual coughing conversation here. Uh, what do you, well, I mean, I, I can, I can sit here and, you know, cannabis talk with you or, 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 you know, Olympic talk with you, but, but tell, tell people who maybe don't know who Ross is and who, what Ross is up to these days. Give us a little backstory, brother. Well, well, the backstory is, uh, I was a pro snowboarder since the mid eighties and, um, you know, made it all the way up to the, the top of that. And, um, for the last 20 years, ever since then, I've been, um, you know, you know, surviving this in this world, doing all kinds of different things, uh, building houses, um, you know, working uh, on the whole cannabis um, side of things as far as speaking out in, in favor of cannabis use and why athletes would choose to use cannabis and, and how it, you know, worked for me. And then over time, because it was about 20 years that I've been talking about this uh, in public. And over time, science eventually started backing me up, which was <laughs> even better. And so, um, you know, then we, we hit uh, a point in time where um, I decided I was going to open my own store. And so we, um, we did, we were open for a couple of years right before legalization. And uh, I remember that, I remember that. The whole Ross Gold brand. Yeah. Still, we eventually closed down after a couple of years. We never got shut down, but we did realize that uh, there were some bylaws on the street that we were currently on that didn't allow for dispensaries moving, moving forward anyways. So, um, you know, we were always looking into a, a bigger model than that anyway, one store, no big deal, move it, close it, open another one or two or three or 10 or who knows. Family, raising kids, you know, the whole, that whole not side of things um you know thrown into the mix also so it's been um you know it's been fun and now going from the whole unregulated black market gray market and moving into the regulated white market um you know is a is a huge transition and of course tons of people uh you know wanted to you know be first in line to to have their licenses and and I was more interested in creating a brand and kind of waiting for the timing to be right, where we could really express ourselves. And now we've got craft cannabis, we've got dispensaries. Yeah. Um, soon enough, we'll have, you know, coffee shops where you can have like food and <laughs> yeah. um, smoke weed and eat food and drink coffee and, and have restaurants and stuff. So now we're finally getting to the point where it's getting interesting for me because not only am I a proponent for medicinal cannabis use, but also for the healthier choice on a recreational level. And, uh, awesome. Right. So that's, that's what I've been doing. That's, you know, I gotta say, man, <laughs> you kind of have like this almost like a uh, mythic type story to you. I mean, you, you got the Olympic fame, you know, then you've got this, you know, like, I, I, I have to be like a, a normal person for a while, right? And then, which we all have to do eventually, you know, raise kids, go to work, all that kind of shit. Uh, but then yeah. you still, you still kind of come back fucking just, oh, like just roaring <laughs> into like the pre-legalization stuff, making your own brand, selling on the street. But then you're, you're all, at the same level, you're not, you know, so brash and so you know, fucking, you know, that you're, you're, you're willing to like, I'm gonna get shut down and make it harder for myself later. Like it's, it's smart, man. It's, it's intuitive. It's, it's really good. Yeah. I mean, it's, this is a, this is going to be a long time that we're, you know, for the rest of our lives, we're going to be, uh, and forever we'll see, you know, legalization improve and, and relax and become better and, uh, you know, work for the people more than, you know, for the, the big companies. And, and I think, you know, the companies can be there to help support the people, but really we need to have like a farmer's market style cannabis industry right. that's full spectrum that includes the, you know, the non-regulated 
<laughs> cannabis and the regulated cannabis. Just like <laughs> farmer's market, you got people coming in there. They don't have a license to sell tomatoes or <laughs> they're not, we're not competing against those big boys, you know, with, the, with our little tomatoes at the farmer's market. Yeah. And uh, there's always going to be millions and millions of people that can't grow their own and would rather go to the um, dispensary. And right. I just think at some point it needs to open right the fuck up and allow for you know a kind of a gray market where there's still a, a sales tax and stuff involved so that right. you know the government's still getting a piece so anyway that's that's my vision of it i i think eventually you know you you have the the the, the sensible approach that i think a lot of us who are dedicated to this have like it's gonna come we kind of want that to happen but yet we're also really realistic that it could be a bit of a battle to get to that point. But you're but like my, my favorite thing right now is is to make people aware that yeah, okay, legalization happened. We we you know quote unquote won, you know, but there are huge inequities and inequalities still with that legislation. So it's it's like we need to re like legalization had all the social movement legalization happened and then boom. And now yeah. we, need to get, we need to get people's, you know, interest back up the social cause again. You well, know? it went from a business or a consumer to consumer kind of a model where it was for the people, by the people to a corporate structure where it was sort of just business to business and very, you know, not very cannabis culture -y at all. And now we're kind of getting back and I'm working with a couple of cannabis um, festivals and shows out here in, in BC on Vancouver Island where oh. it's more back in the, like a 10 year old trade show where it's more, you know, consumer to consumer for the people, by the people. We're gonna have, you know, it's like an outdoor music festival with cannabis. Mm. Uh, and in any case, um, awesome. You're right. I mean, that's where it is. It's getting back to, you know, it had to kind of like work its way through the, the whole weird, you know, <laughs> system of, you know, all these publicly traded companies kind of hogging all the attention. And then as it turns out, just what we were thinking is that they don't know how to produce for the people that are used to already you know, super chronic levels of, of cannabis. Right. And, uh, you know, now we're getting craft licenses and we're getting, you know, a lot of the black market growers regulated and licensed. And those were the good guys. I mean, these are the guys that were making seven figures yeah. a year. No wonder the LPs were struggling paying their, like what grower can you get to grow weed for like under a hundred grand a year? Like nobody. Yeah, it's you're totally right. You're totally right because it's not it, they can make the money somewhere else, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, you got to give them some reason to to come in now. If you, now they can own their own license, yeah. um, I've Branding. crunched the numbers and and a micro license you can make a million dollars a year. So, um, if you're good and you can move your product, um, it's it's there for you. And if you can handle more than one license. There you go, and, and you're yeah, allowed man. to have more than one, so it's looking good. I had I had the CEO of Delta Nine Cannabis on a little earlier, and uh, they're like Manitoba's big LP, but in like the grand scheme of things, they're pretty small. Uh, and they they do like proprietary grow equipment with like the, the grow pods, and they also were talking about um, the <clears throat> the local. There's a craft brewer or craft craft brewer craft grower uh who just got his uh his his micro license up here in northern manitoba so it's really cool you know nice. that's actually finally coming to fruition where yeah. like you're saying the guys who've been in it for years who yeah. didn't have 10 million dollars in the beginning but right. maybe can put together 250 grand or something you know they can yeah. get into the market now you know? I mean, that's exactly where I was at. Like, I, I wasn't capitalized either. I had uh, some of my own advantages that some, you know, are unique to to me. And, uh, <laughs> some Ross traits. <laughs> yeah, it's the X factor. And so, <laughs> Ross you, know, <laughs> you know, now that we're seeing, like, a more open 
and recreational side, now this is when I can really start to flex a little bit and put together a, a team where, you know, we can see a future instead of, you know, seeing the end of prohibition. That wasn't really a, a big, <laughs> it was kind of like a roadblock actually. Yeah, it was. And Not so, the hurdle uh, down. Yeah. You know, we were all fighting for, for the end of prohibition and to get cannabis legalized. But at the same time, you know, there was a great era coming to an end. Yeah, you know, it's interesting that you mentioned that because we had uh, Sasha from Hemp Fest Canada on uh, earlier. And, you know, with their events, you know, pre-legalization, you know, I'm emceeing these events across Canada you know, where we got, we got kushoil.com and we got, you know, Buds Direct and greengod.ca and all these other places, you know, pumping out the weed left, right, center. And then legalization happens. And then the next temp fest that comes around afterwards is like, yeah, like guys in suits and ties and <laughs> pointy shoes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh look at a vest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> guys so, yeah, wearing too tight suits fuck yeah man uh and then looking like they're really trying to be cool so they have like the vest for like the shirt opened up a little bit but you're like nah, you're, they're like, trying to be as this crazy corporate cannabis fashion <laughs> and uh so yeah it's really it's cool i mean to be fair there there are good lps out there that have oh. that um you know passion for cannabis and and some of those mmar guys got organized and were you know clever enough and had the right people around them um so they're out there and i don't mean to like bag on <laughs> on all of them but uh it is what it is and, and um you know like i was i was a big fan of broken coast uh mm -hmm. they're, you know bc guys like they had yeah. Not only like in the in the medical market pre legalization, like were they known for having quality, but after legalization, mm -hmm. they were like one of the only brands out there that had good weed. Not yeah. not okay weed, but good weed. And I, I, it, I would put broken coast at the top. Yeah, Sorry? I would put broken coast at the at the top of the LP uh, <laughs> cannabis but, list yeah. for sure. Yeah, what was that? Uh, uh, oh, I can't even remember their fucking names anymore. Oh my god! All I know is they were just crazy, but dense. Like, just you could tell that someone in BC grew it. You know, yeah. like it just had that like manicure. Like, <laughs> you know, it was just this nice. Uh, uh, so a good friend of mine is, uh, you know, who helps start up um, Broken Coast now works with oh, yeah. um, Habitat. Really? And um, Habitat is a LP, or they're actually a craft license here in BC that uses um, a coho uh, salmon farm to feed the the plants. And they got this this caviar. It's called Cake and Caviar or something like that. And anyways, it's just sick. So oh my god, it's my <laughs> wife Allie here. <laughs> Hi, Allie, how's it going? Is this a podcast? Uh, it's a live stream 420 12-hour marathon. Happy 420. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm, I'm like the 420 guy for Winnipeg. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's, Speaking uh, of uh, Winnipeg, I, I just got this uh, this sick grinder in the mail. <laughs> well, tell, tell me a little bit about your sick grinder. <laughs> Well, it's this sick grinder from Lyft out of uh, Winnipeg, I believe. Yeah. Manufactured <laughs> in, in Canada. Damn right. And uh, yeah, it's been <laughs> slicing and dicing ever since I got it. Like, let me, I started using it yesterday, okay? And I, I made a little video on my uh, IGTV of, of my, my review of it. Yeah, I gotta but, that. Oh, it's warm here, so my crystal melted inside here. But <laughs> yeah, oh, I got a pile of crystal on there. Oh shit! Yeah, at the bottom, eh? Just caked. <laughs> yeah, you can't really see it. But anyways, it big brother. It's melted. Oh, I could just roll that up right now. Are you on the island? 
No, I'm in uh, Kelowna. Oh, shit, you're in Kelowna. Yeah. Oh, no, <laughs> shit. My aunt and uncle own, like, a majority of the Tim Hortons in your city. Oh, maybe I can get a <laughs> Tim Hortons card. <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> let, let me message them about that. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, shit. I just rolled Ooh. it up into a sick little ball. I see that. You're just like, finger nugget it. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm going to have to do something. I'm going to roll it into a snake, I think, and put it into a joint. Ooh. I did that with some hash earlier, brother. Damn. I wish I, like, oh. That sounds like a really good idea, but I'm just going to put some of this in my barn. I got this nug of hash I've been working on. It used to be, like, this big this morning. Now it's like oh, this. Yeah. <laughs> nice. It's been a long day, man. I got a lot of medical buddies who hooked me up with some nice products for today, but okay. I've just been smoking through it like nonstop. Um, one of our big uh, illegal medical gray, black, green, whatever market you want to call it, uh, got busted just here in Winnipeg the other day. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I was, I was in like the paper about it and stuff, and it was just really shocking to see not only like the scope of it from like a, a news, you know, police perspective, but then to see the onslaught of people who were then out of a cannabis supply, really right. Funny. Yeah, I heard about something like that out there. Yeah, it's it's rough, man. It's uh, so it's as much as it is nice for us to both be blazing some really good weed here and shit, it's, it's, it's sad that I know that there are probably some people out there who couldn't find fucking 420 stacks. Today, you know? That it, sucks. It does. It fucking really, really, really sucks. Cause That's why you got to grow your own, man. Amen, brother. Amen. You know, uh, I fought for that when MMAR licenses almost got taken away and we ended up winning, right? So yeah. for all the people who fought for that shit. Yeah, well, that was the Allard case. That was that was coalition against repeal. Yeah, I was growing for my buddy at the time in the MMAR. Nice, and, nice. Uh, they actually went to the court case in the courthouse to watch it. Oh, sick! See, yeah, if I was in BC, I would have been there, man. Like, I was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I remember there was video like live stream from like outside the courtroom all day. It was like Dana and like Kirk Tucson and shit. And I'm like, what's up? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, yeah no, it was. Uh, those were the the old the old days, the good old days. <laughs> well, <laughs> the, the days when regulations weren't so much of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, well, it's good, uh, you know, to get it to this point, and I think there's still a lot, a lot to a lot more to go. And, there, there is, and and you know, like again, that's where. You know, I think not only not only like just our our Canadian culture, but I think our progressiveness as a society here to be at the point where you know we are at a point where we're not just fighting uh, for legalization, we're fighting for a better legalization. And I yeah. think fighting for a better legalization has got to be the best fucking tagline I've ever heard. Like, yeah. I know, it's like, it's like better? Like, <laughs> it's gonna get better, it's gonna get better and better forever. And, yeah, uh, right? I think yeah. that, you know, we're in a good spot to, you know, without legalization, we wouldn't even be started yet. And, and so, you are uh, right. You know, we're ahead of the game because you gotta start somewhere with legalization and you know, how are the politicians supposed to know anything? No, I, I agree. Most of them I, uh, never did anything, you know, it, you know, besides, you know, a lot there, you know, there's been a few guys out there and, and some women out there that have, that have actually done stuff that bring a lot to the table. But, you know, these career politicians that are calling the shots, man, I mean, they, they you know, I think that the guard is, that's the changing of the guard right now, I think. I feel you, man. Like, uh, my last interview was with the Green Party leader of Manitoba. Like, I ran I ran for election twice, right? Like, my election's down here. Okay. So it's, it's important for you to get involved if you don't feel like they're representing you. And 
my tagline was real people, real issues, right? Right. So, I don't want somebody right. who's fucking never struggled to pay a cell phone bill to be determining what, you know, telecommunication rates are acceptable. Like, that's yeah, or daycare and stuff like that. Yeah, ex exactly. I got I mean, three kids. Let me tell you, I ran for a uh, MP back, what, 10 years ago here. I remember that. I remember that. And uh, I was running on the platform for um, infrastructure, senior care, and child care. See? How old and, are you, uh, 10, 7, and 4. Fuck off. Good for you, man. <laughs> so, That's uh, awesome. Man. I, got, I got a 17-year-old girl and a 10 or 11-year-old son. So. Oh, right on. Yeah. yeah so you know it. You know it. <laughs> well, parenting yeah. is like the best blessing in the world, man. I mean, I mean I'm not going to lie. I have a feeling that... And I, I don't want to trivialize this, but I have a feeling that holding a gold medal, listening to your Canadian anthem play, is probably pretty fucking satisfying as a comparison. Just say, just say. It's probably the next second, like the closest second that you can get. That okay. you know, probably, <laughs> you know, and I'm very, you know. I lost your audio. There we go. Oh, that was there my mom calling. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's uh, kind of a, a, you know, I don't even, it's a, been a dream ride, man. I'm telling you, I, I don't even know what's coming next. Well, we, and you know, you and a lot of us are positioned really well to make sure that we have the opportunity to create real change with where legalization is and where it's going um and you know the people who, who don't give up the fight right now the people who stay committed are, are not only the people who've shown their true commitment and the true colors but they're the people who are really going to make not only niches for themselves but niches that will carve out opportunities for the majority of us that were left out initially so yeah very inspirational that's it uh, Thanks. That's <laughs> it, brother. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I am, I'm, I'm a guy. Like, I mean, you may not know it, you know, by, uh, by looking at me, Ross. But like, I'm legally blind. Um, I got a cane. Okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but I cover it well uh, because I've learned to manage over years. Um, and and I think that that what people really need to pay attention to is it's not just disabilities that can give you strength with adversity. It's being committed towards creating and affecting that positive change in your own community or your own life that mm -hmm. really can give you that, that, that you know, encouragement to make it through those tough times. So when you see yourself making it easier for you know, you know the, the person to get groceries or the disabled person to have mobility concerns raised, you know, it's just really comforting. And I think our community as, as a cannabis community, um, because of the medical aspects, because of the legitimacy that that brought the legalization movement, the saving of lives, the changing of, of, of quality and, and quality of life for people, I think that was really the catalyst that not only gave us the movement of legalization, but it holds us together as a fabric. Yeah, I made a joke that, that we are stuck together as a community so well, especially through tough times, because of, of all the fucking THC that's keeping us stuck together. <laughs> it's, we are a community, and we stand together when people like you and people, yep. like, and people like everybody else out there who fought before us come together, and we, we, we unite. I mean, I got lots of personal beef with people out there. Trust me. I'm sure you do. I'm sure everybody else does. But we put that aside for the greater good. And that's the important thing. And I am inspired as fuck by you, brother. Like, all right. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> hey, man. Appreciate it. Dude, no yeah. problem. By the way, I love the fucking shades, brother. As a blind guy who really appreciates shades, though. <laughs> <laughs> these are, these are, you can get these at London Drugs for $19. <laughs> Three, I love cheap shit. Love it. <laughs> yeah. I had to, I melted the middle part in between to make and bent the frame out so they would fit around my head. That's really? 
They had a, a COVID sign on the thing saying you're not allowed to try them on. <laughs> and so I fucking grabbed them anyways. And I fucking got to the car and like, oh, I got these six shades for 20 bucks. And they were like for a pinhead. I couldn't get them on. <laughs> and I was so choked. I didn't want to throw them out. And so I just, I melted the middle of them with my lighter and bent and just flexed them out. And then I needed to use uh, Gorilla Glue to <laughs> keep the lenses in. Wait, wait, wait. Like actual Gorilla Glue or like did you just smear some weed in there and make it sticky? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. No, man. No, that the, is actual, the, the actual Gorilla Glue. The, the actual, the trademark shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got it. I got it right here. Awesome. Awesome, brother. That is a Canadian fucking story right there. <laughs> That's I don't a give a fuck, story. Man. I don't give a shit. I, I used it, to man. be sponsored by Oakley and, and had millions of pairs of Oakleys and I lost every single pair of them. <laughs> and the only ones I don't lose are the shitty ones from 7-Eleven. Dude, I, like, this is, like, my blind guy cane. Like, check it out. Like, I put, I put little weed leaves on it. Sick. So people, people know that I'm, like, I'm already fucking advertised Peacock Green all day, but, you know. Gotta have some fun with it. All That's right. beauty. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> uh, we are we're honestly we're done, brother. We're done. This All is, right. This is that was it. Right on. I can't fucking thank you enough, man. I really can't. Um, well, thanks for having me. Thanks for thinking about me. And uh, yeah, have a happy four fucking twenty. Um, hopefully, that. COVID fucking hits the the deck soon and we can all get back to uh you know a more normal lifestyle but yeah. to be honest i like this whole staying at home thing <laughs> <laughs> just just chilling <laughs> i love it <laughs> that's awesome bro. all right brother peace hey, out thank you so much i appreciate it much love brother stay safe and uh i'm sure we'll meet at the next hem fest or something brother Absolutely. Yeah, All right, man. man. Take care. Take care.